recent years, drill music has gained insane popularity amongst rap music lovers. There is an opinion because of this genre, criminal activity has increased. Chicago at the dawn of drill music was considered the most dangerous city in the United States and earned its infamous nickname as Chirac. And then the British government removed over 100 music videos of drill artists and New York City Hall is trying to ban the genre itself. So today we're gonna be talking about the history of this genre and what the difference is between Chicago, New York and British drill music. So what is drill? Drill is a form of rap music that originated in the south side of Chicago and is a huge part of the history of rap music in this region, and it can be recognized by the gritty dark lyrical content. Drill is dedicated to the daily ordeal of street life. The word drill itself is a slang term and refers to someone getting shot, or in a UK context, it usually refers to someone getting stabbed. So what is it that makes drill so unique? Let's start with flow. Chicago rappers typically write their lyrics in a deadpan and almost monotonous vocal style that evokes the emotionally draining atmosphere of their environment. The influence of trap music is reflected in the frequent use of autotune to give a cold vibe to their music. But in Britain, and especially in New York, rappers try to avoid autotune to have more of an expressive presentation to their tracks. Now let's move on to lyrics. The first wave of the Chicago drill scene featured violent lyrics with monotonous delivery, which emphasized the sinister plot of their songs. Moving on to production, drill producers such as Chicago's Young Chop, who produced many of Chief Keef's early work, followed the example of trap music, using drum machine beats, 808s, and 60 to 7 beats per minute, plus catchy melodies favored with a menacing vibe. Meanwhile, in the UK, artists like Hetty One using faster beats with great emphasis on melody, and in New York Drill, they use a clear delivery of material, warmer production, and recently with the sampling of famous pop songs. But let's go back to the roots of the Chicago Drill scene, and let's talk about the city itself. At this very moment, Chicago is on the list of the most dangerous cities in the United States. But back in 2013, it was number one on that list. And because of that, Chicago Drill got so much attention. The local police said that the growth of crime in Chicago was increasing rapidly. Because if in 2011, 431 people were killed, then in 2012, there were already 515 people. Therefore, the Windy City was ahead of the country's largest metropolis of New York City, despite the fact that the population of the city at the time was 2.7 million in New York, having 8.3 million people. It was said that the increase in violence in the city was caused by the redistribution of spheres of influence in the poor areas of the city. According to police statistics, the peak of crimes committed here falls on weekends. On average, every Saturday and Sunday, six to eight people per day die here, and about 30 are injured. So now you understand the reason for the birth of Drill, and why exactly the Shy got this infamous nickname. Waka Flocka Flame and Gucci Mane had a very significant impact on the sound of Drill music. But as with many hip hop scenes, it was the culture of the environment that really influenced the sound. Drill was based on the chaotic nature and frequent incidents of violence in certain neighborhoods on the south side of Chicago, especially in the Woodlawn area, also known as Drill City. Rapper from Woodland, Pac-Man, was the first one to use the word drill for describing shooting in his single which was released in 2010 and titled, It's a Drill, and unfortunately, his life ended in the exact same year. However, this song became an example for future drill rappers like Chief Keef and his singles I Don't Like and Kanye's remix on it, which brought national attention to this genre, and after Love Sosa, everybody fell in love with it. Drill music took off when Chief Keef signed the Interscope and his appearance on Yeezus back in 2013, and yes, Chief Keef wasn't the only one who gave the Chicago drill scene a boost in popularity. G Herbo, Lil Durk, Lil Reese, and Fredo Santana also contributed to the development of this genre. This wave couldn't be unnoticed. For example, the UK, at the time grime, was the main rap genre in the UK, and drill became an alternative which started an evolution of the UK rap scene. And grime also influenced the sound of the local drill scene, and that's why their beats are faster and sound more electronic. But for now, let's keep our eyes on the US, now we're moving to New York, and like British artists, drill performers in New York were also inspired by the Chicago Brothers to describe the life of local gangs. While the London drill scene didn't spawn the New York drill scene, rappers from the Big Apple borrowed a ton of sound, style, and rhythm features from their London counterparts. A great example of this is Pop Smoke's single, Welcome to the Party, which was produced by British beatmaker 808 Mello, who has worked with K-Trap and Hetty One before. Also, the connection between British and New York drill artists can be traced not only to a similar lifestyle and sound, but also in roots. 
Most of the important figures in their scene are Caribbean and first generation Afro Latinos, same as most British counterparts. K Flock and D Thing are Dominicans, Chef G's family is Haitian and Jamaican, Tutu G's family has Guyanese roots, and that's why cultural traditions explain why New York and London drill artists have such close ties. The press doesn't talk much about New York street life right now, but thanks to the music, we know that there are two main gangs there, Wu and Cho. What is unique about the New York drill scene? The defining elements of New York drill's biggest artists gotta be vocals. There are wordy and technical rappers on stage, but New York artists leave plenty of room for choruses, and now we're moving to the UK. The British rap scene has made a huge contribution to the development and popularization of drill music. No one could have imagined that the guys from Britain would support the genre, and one might even have to say, they may be the best at it. Considering the average American rap fan who hears something about British rap and immediately thinks of tea, biscuits, and crumpets, does not even suspect how they changed the genre and made it global. The London scene was born immediately after the release of Chief Keef's I Don't Like. And as we all know, in Britain, it is very difficult to get firearms, unlike their counterparts in Chicago. But they are similar in their scattered structure, but due to British laws, they use edged weapons like machetes, cleavers, katanas, and kitchen knives. Also in Britain were popular rap groups instead of solo rappers. Most notable UK drill groups are Harlem Spartans, OFB, 1011, aka CGM, Block 6, and Zone 2. Many British fans of the genre consider Kennington, where it started by the Harlem Spartans, to be a turning point in British drill history. Because after the line, question if gang pull up, are you gonna back your brethren? by killed rapper Biss became the last draw holding back from everyone's attention, and it opened the door to mass listeners to artists like Hetty One, Russ Millions, Pounds, Dig That, and Dig a D. Not only when you listen to Chicago and UK drill back to back, you can spot the difference in them. Not only musically, but also culturally. There is a general similarity in the aggressiveness of each sound, but the British prefer cold sparse beats with militant hi-hats, sliding 808s, and plenty of room for vocals. In terms of culture, British rappers are mostly first or second generation, many of whom are West African or Caribbean. For this reason, the accents and jargon that dominates both grime and drill are a huge mixture of British, Somali, Arabic, and Jamaican slang. Also, the British drill scene sparked a fierce debate about street violence in England, with a focus on London. Like the drill scene in Chicago, the British drill scene has opened the public's eye to the harsh realities that London's low-come youth has to face. Both American and British officials have blamed the music for everything, although this is only a symptom of their own irresponsibility. In recent years, the British media have been reporting on an increase in the level of violence on the streets in England. And as I said earlier, politicians and the police are blaming drill music for everything and anything. Therefore, they arrange mass removal of drill clips from the internet or putting restrictions on rappers to create such music. Which, if we're being honest, is kind of stupid. Like I've said, drill rap is a part of the culture, and in my opinion, these bands are stupid because they're not effective in reducing violence on the streets and do not affect the root cause. You know, things like childhood trauma, poverty, bad schools, family breakdowns. But hopefully, a better understanding does come with drill as it continues to gain popularity, but I think we'll leave this video right here. If there are other topics that you would like to see covered, let us know in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in another video.